Welcome back, my dear light bulbs, to another Samurai 8 review. If you're a new viewer to my channel, remember to subscribe so you become part of the light bulb army. Now, this chapter, Samurai 8, was filled with so much content, and I am so happy. We waited a week for this, well, actually like two weeks for this chapter because last week's Shonen Jump was on a break. And it's good when the manga gets rest and stuff, so that is, I am completely fine with that. Now, the thing with this chapter also was delayed so we got it on saturday instead of friday so that is that is why i'm doing my review on saturday so let's get right into it now hashimaru's dad kept saying something well hashimaru kept saying something about the filial piety um rituals and when is he gonna do it and when he's gonna do it and i looked it up and it's actually a ritual used for mourning and then his dad is like you know you could do it right now because literally his dad died and it was so sad that's the first major death in the series and it's only a couple chapters in and we already got a major death and this death obviously is gonna progress hashimaru further and in the end, it goes to establish no matter if obviously um, Hashimaru's father is not like his blood father or anything like that. He's still his father in the end because he was the one that created Hashimaru or Hashimaru's real name is Hashikaku. But I'm going to call him Hashimaru because that's what his father called him. And yes, since he created him and yes, um, and because Hashimaru is an artificial human or a samurai or whatever. He's a samurai. Um, he's still the father of Hashimaru at the end of the day. And, you know, he used a really powerful, not even technique, a really powerful tool to try to destroy the samurai soul of Atta. And it turns out it was just a clone, which is kind of sad because he literally sacrificed his life um, to try to kill a clone, which he obviously didn't know at that point. But it still helped to the point where it left enough time for Daruma to finish off the Atta clone and, you know, everybody else was safe except for Hashimaru's dad. Now, the chapter was really emotional. It was raining and stuff when, be even before it was raining, um, obviously the rain symbolizes, you know, mourning. It symbolizes death uh, sometimes. And yeah, it was the death of Hashimaru's father. And before that, Hashimaru's like, okay, Hagamichi, can you take him to our house? We got the system, support system I used to be on. Come on, let's go, let's go. And Hagamichi's like, okay, we could do that. And then it just started raining, which it just shows, like, you know, it's not meant to be. It's not meant for Hashimaru's father um, to survive this. And obviously, flying in these conditions is not a vice, like Hagamichi said. And, you know, everybody just surrounding Hashimaru's father's um, body and everybody looks sad and despaired and Atta, um I reread the chapter he said to Dharma he said oh, okay I'm gonna leave you something to remember me by and then basically Dharma's like to remember him by and I guess it was the death of Hashimaru's father I think that was the memory that he wanted to imp um, implement into Dharma's you know head and stuff like look look what I did that that's your pr that's my present to you so um, Atta looks like he's going to be the main antagonist of the series. Now, originally, I thought maybe Atta obviously will not die, but come back, and that is the case. His clone uh, got destroyed, but Atta is coming back nevertheless. Um, later on in the series, hopefully way later on, I don't want him to. I don't want to see Atta for a while. Um, not because I hate the character or anything like that, but because I wanted to see some other antagonists and stuff that Hashimaru could fight that are not as strong as Atta because Atta is like a level 100 boss and Hashimaru is like a, a level 10 character right now so uh, obviously I don't want to see Atta or his clones um, for, for a while uh, until um, Hashimaru gets more training and completes his training with Daruma and becomes strong enough you know to venture out on his own. Now obviously there's a time when a pupil surpasses his master and there's also a time when a pupil has to leave his master's side and go on his own and I actually want that for Hashimaru later down the line later in the series because I don't want Daruma to always be traveling Hashimaru because then as the fans we know like Daruma could be a crutch for Hashimaru where in critical situations obviously Daruma is not going to let um, Hashimaru die so he's going to protect ha Hashimaru from danger and that's not a good thing because if that's the case and Hashimaru is in a situation where he's about to die then Daruma is always there you're just like okay Hashimaru will be fine, Daruma is there. So, you know, there's going to be a time way later on where hopefully they split apart and then um, Hashimaru is like, Master, I have to go on my journey on my own like you did all those years ago or whatever centuries ago because Daruma is really old and he his samurai soul is like this cat body right now. So, yeah, I definitely want to see um, 
Hashimaru become independent. Now, obviously, Hashimaru is not going to go on an adventure on, on his own, but I mean, like, without his master. So, um, right now, the travel companions of Hashimaru are Hagamichi and Princess Anne, and obviously Hayataro. Hayataro is probably looking at me like, hey, don't forget me. I may be a dog that meows like a cat, but... You know, I'm still a dog at the end of the day. So, yeah, he has those companions. And he also has that companion that's still in the other um, samurai school that, you know, was like, you know, just get... Uh, give me a while. I'll, I'll, I'll come around and stuff. So, um, I can't wait for, basically, Hashimaru's companions all to travel with him and stuff. So, yeah, um, another thing is the brother of... The older brother of Hashimaru, Ikaku, he was just not making... He was not making any type of sense. Like, he literally was like, okay, um, Hashikaku, you got to give the energy you stole from us back because because of your creation, which was not supposed to happen. You destroyed the balance. Now we cannot open the box. So there's two boxes. They're, they're trying to open the Mandala box and the... Um, Pan and Pandora's box and because Hashimaru was born which obviously they only need seven people or seven samurais seven keys on um, the balance was destroyed so if Hashimaru gives the energy back to them he actually dies and Ikaku was just saying this cash and he's like oh you know because you should be understanding you were not supposed to be born your birth was not even necessary he was saying all of these things I'm like whoa because on super fluids um uh if that's how you say it means unnecessary i was like damn like he's, he's just like hashimaru like you're not even supposed to be alive right now just give us our energy back and you'll be good you will we'll be happy that you did that like you your your existence here is not necessary and ikaku was saying all of this and obviously as an older brother other older brother or brother you understand like you don't talk to your brother like that but obviously um I guess the emotion factor is not there for um, Ikaku and the other um, people that like, Hash like Hashimaru and stuff. I think they're, you know, like the doctor said, he was trying to, um, they were trying to create perfect beings. So I guess what comes near perfection is no emotions and stuff. And they probably don't have emotions and stuff. And that reminds me of some other characters from uh, another series, which I'm not going to mention because that's actually a major spoiler. So yeah, all of that happened. Ikaku, I really don't like Ikaku already. So Hashimaru versus Ikaku, I'm, I'm rooting for Hashimaru. Um, as, his, uh, as Hashimaru's father was dying, he actually told Hashimaru, hey, um, you know, you're a samurai that protects people. And that was really heartwarming because um, that's the main message Kishimoto makes in his mangas. It's like, uh, you know, protect your friends, protect others. Protecting others comes um, over, uh, comes first over protecting yourself or doing things because of selfish reasons. And that's a message that Kishimoto always spreads in, in his manga. So that was really cool that he said that. And he even said, hey, you got somebody to protect right there, Princess Anne as well. Um, and another thing is Dharma in this chapter said to Atta, he was like, oh, you betrayed Hannah. I believe her name was Hannah. And I guess that was either Atta's old prince. I think that was Atta's old princess. Maybe she died um, some way, somehow. I think that is the case. And Atta was like, I didn't betray anybody. The gods betrayed me first. So when he said that, he, he probably was angry. And I think that is the case. I believe his princess died in some some conflict or something and Atta couldn't take the pain so you know he was like what's the best way to combat fate or destiny you know the death of the princess is to become a god myself and to you know start anew that's what he said and we got more of Atta's plan in this chapter which he literally wants to get the open the mandala box open pandora's box and mandala box is like a box in buddha buddha buddha, buddha oh, man, i can't even say the word Buddhism and Hinduism. Um, so that's really interesting, you know, when stuff like that plays factors into this. Open that up, get the same power as the um, war god Akela. So he has to be trying to become a war god himself. He said the Ush Ushma school, uh, you know, are trying to become gods. But you know, in reality, Atta's like looks like a selfish person. So he's probably talking just about himself. Get that power. First, he wants to destroy all the samurai schools. That's first. And then the next thing is he wants to destroy every every all the life on the galaxy and start anew. So when he was talking about all those chapters ago, talking about, oh, I'm trying to restore the universe to how it used to be. He was not talking about how it used to be. He's talking about literally uh, mass genocide, destroying everybody, every living thing, and then just doing this. Like, like Thanos or something, but worse. 
and then just recreating things in his image. So his whole goal is selfish in itself. And uh, you no, know, with this recreated universe, he's probably gonna find a way if Hannah did die, um, to bring her back and stuff. So Atta is uh, Atta is out of control. Like no, Atta gotta get defeated. Um, Hashimaru obviously has to defeat him. His father even said, "Can you do it?" And can you defeat Atta? And then Hashimaru was like, I'll try. So, you know, I, I can't wait for this. So, uh, we're still early on on Samurai 8. It's still really hype. A lot of people are, are talking about Samurai 8 now. I'm really happy about that. A lot of people are giving praise to Samurai 8 when in the beginning they dropped the series or whatever. But, you know, as long as you keep, you know, in tune with a series like this and after a couple chapters and it picks up and the pacing um, gets fixed, then, you know, a series gets better. You always got to give a series a chance. And Samurai 8 is a series by Kishimoto that it's it's really good right now. It's really good. And um, it was a really sad chapter. Um, rest in peace, Hashimaru's father once again. And this will not only... This will only lead to Hashimaru's growth as a character mentally. And physically as well. Because he's obviously going to train even harder to... Um, to do his father's dying wish, like, you know, defeat Atta. He's going to try to defeat Atta. And I don't see Hashimaru now defeating Atta, but H Hashimaru in the future, like, way later on, getting strong enough to defeat Atta. And I'll, obviously, I want to see Hashimaru master his samurai armor as well and his samurai soul sword he has. Overall, I'm going to give this chapter a 9.5 9 out of 10. Hope you enjoyed this review. And if you did, remember to have a great day. Peace.